Hey everyone, we're um, up in Wyoming and we're on the production floor for the Box Elder Company and we're with Mark and he's going to show us, um, he's going to help us make um, an invention that he came up with that's a really cool survival tool, it's a bug out tool, it's just a practical, practical tool to have. So um, I'm excited to show you guys what it's going to look like in the end. This uh, piece of oak, where did you get these from and well, um, why oak? Well, where I got them from um, is from a pipe yard, a local pipe yard. And when they would get a train load of pipe in, they would have these stringers in between the layers of pipe. So the pipe isn't just stacked on pipe, it's, it's actually one layer each of these pipes. And they were throwing these things away. And I saw them sitting out there and thought, well, some of that looks like pretty good stuff. So being a borderline hoarder, um, I collected as many of them as I could, uh, even kind of damaging a roof rack that I had on an old Jeep of mine because I stacked so many of them up there, and the weight was was uh, overwhelming. But as it turned out, they weren't just rough cut pine; they were actually rough cut oak. So I collected a bunch of this wood and didn't know what I wanted to do with it. At first, I just was chunking it up for pieces of firewood for my little wood stove that I have inside my cargo trailer conversion camper. And uh, they work really well for that. But I was seeing a video on YouTube of a mountain lion chasing a hiker in Utah. And every time it looked like he tried to bend down and pick up a stone or something to try and scare it off, he would get charged. And I thought, boy, you know, I don't even know if my walking stick would uh, save me from that. So I started thinking about, well, maybe there are some self-defense walking sticks out there that you can get to use for when you're confronted by a predator, uh, no matter what kind of predator it is. And uh, I went online, and all I could find were things that were really fidgety. You had to... Um, virtually take them apart and pull out the knife and put them back on there and screw it together and I thought well by that time you might be eaten. My second thought was the old saying that uh, you don't have to outrun the predator you just have to outrun your friend to save yourself and at my age I'm not going to be outrunning uh, too many people so I thought I better defend myself. So I came up with this idea of building a, a, a blade inside of a walking stick. This was my first attempt. This one was not made of the oak. It was actually made out of a chunk of hawthorn. And uh, it's a little bit more crude and thicker than my current versions. But essentially what it is, is it is a... Let me get over here to where the light's a little bit better. It is a knife built inside of this channel that I hollow out and it is a flipper knife and when you flip the opener down, up she comes, locks in place and then I have an actual defense weapon for whatever predator might be coming after me. Um, and it's easily, you can easily reach the liner lock and close it back down. It also comes with a lock right here so that it can't accidentally be flipped open. You have to open the safety, flick it, and you're defending yourself. Anyway, it turned out so good that I decided to start producing these. And Paul is up here today. Um, I invited him to make his own because um, I don't want to make one for him. <laughs> no, I would, but but uh, he would like to make his own, so that's what we're going to do. Now I'll show you what the current production model looks like. This is it. It's thinner, it's lighter, it's oak, it's very strong. Has the same blade built into it, retained by a full pass-through dowel there, and these dowels uh, intersect with openings in the handle of the blade, but it's the same concept, has the same knife, and that's it. So it makes for a nice, clean, uh, kind of stealthy looking 
walking stick. I haven't installed a lanyard on this one yet, but I intend to. But it makes for kind of a neat thing. And people have told me I could sell everyone I can make. So I'm taking them up on their dare, and I'm going to make as many of these as I have wood, and we'll see how many I can sell. So that's where we're at right now. Here's a production for a shot of the famed Box Elder Company. It's only half of the company. The other company makes fantastic fused glass. Again, awesome, awesome way to set up a little shop and carport. And it's about 20 degrees outside. And it's easily 15 here, so it's going to be there and he marks it for contouring it later. I got this piece. Mm -hmm. Holes. Holes for the dowels. Get the back end here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of well, the thing is, like I say, if you want to put a comfortable hand swell in oh, there, then yeah. this one you would actually kind of take like this and and sort of uh, come off of there and follow it down, like sort of like this, the length of your hand, and then then you can put another one there to kind of get a little kind of a serpentine looking thing going there if you want, just oh, for this interest. Be, this would be cool. And then see it kind of puts a curve in there and then you taper the rest. Awesome. And let's pull that off, see if you got it. Yep. Okay. So the next step we'll set up and uh, we'll actually drill the holes for the dowels. Alright, we routed the routed the ends, did the template, now we're gonna drill the holes for the dowels. See how you almost yeah. took some of the other one? It's all right. You just took it down to the limit. See? Yeah, I was, I was. So you got to really do it at an angle. I was used to a flatter. Yeah, you got to really do it at an angle. Yeah. And you're almost better off just to gouge where it's at and finish it with the other. There you go. Close counts because you can take the rest down with the other one. Now the middle one. Now you got the middle groove you got to take out. Oh. Want your old hand to help you with that? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, because you'll be able to finish it with the lighter sander. You can take this little tip off if you want. See where it is right there? Someone who carved wood by hand, carves wood by hand, this angle grinder, this stuff's the way to go. You gotta <laughs> get used to this. What do you think back there, producer? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, here we go some more. Springtime in the Rockies. <laughs> making making this awesome thing 
uh, but I want to talk to you guys about walking sticks or trekking poles. Um, a lot of hikers, a lot of backpackers, they don't necessarily maybe feel the need. Cold out here. Um, but I find that they're one of the most important things that I carry. Um, obviously support. When I started hiking back up seriously a few years ago, um, I would get extremely tired and, and going downhill was extremely hard on my knees. And so I started carrying one. Um, beyond that, I found that you know, they have so many uses. Um, first aid, of course, um, you know, helping you get out of situations. Um, creek crossings, absolutely invaluable. Um, probing, you know, in, in Colorado in the snow, um, you want to make sure where you're stepping is going to be a, a solid place. Um, shelter building, you know, having it to prop up a tarp if you're, um, you know, if you're sleeping that way. I think there, there's something I'm never going to go without, whether it's trekking pole or whether it's going to be one of, <laughs> one of these awesome things. So, all right, going to work on some more, finish sanding, and then come back with the, the big install. All right, we're getting closer to the end here. This is where I'm getting to on my working towards a finished product. Um, we're going to throw some stain on it and then uh, move on to the next part, which is installing the knife. All right, stay tuned. Ow! Okay. Ooh, that is going to be pretty, though. Look at that. good yeah all right we'll do the rest all right so we have finished up the walking stick um, last piece obviously was installing the knife um, with this really attractive dowel system that we have here's the, the finished product always love that authoritative clunk that it opens with Really, really solid materials, really, really solid knives. And, and a solid see. build. And I really like the embellishments that you did on your own to personalize this one yeah. for your hand and your grip. And something, I guess, that uh, I wouldn't do for one that I build just for general sale, but uh, certainly any customer could uh, then take theirs later on yeah. and uh, go ahead and personalize it on their own. Yep, there's a little extra customization that we did. Um, as you can see, there are um, plenty of different sizes, styles available um, to fit anyone's needs. Um, and they all have that familiar snap, yeah. which I love. I don't know why. Yep. Great product from a great manufacturer. And I love the tongue-in-cheek reference you made to my production floor, which is actually a uh, kind of a ra uh, rapidly closed off carport that I did just so I'd have a place to work on these because my garage has been captured by my wife's, his mom's, uh, fused glass artwork, which, which we love. Yeah. Both of which are under the Box Elder Company umbrella. This is Box Elder Fused Glass, can be found on Facebook. Yeah. And on Gmail, Box Elder Company at gmail.com. Alright, thank you very much. That's a nice grizzly bear you got there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. <laughs>